Hey everybody, this is Darren Van Dam, and you are watching Flick Connection, the show that helps you get more out of movies, and today we're gonna be talking about some of the best movies on Prime Video that you've probably never seen. So this is going to be a list of 19 movies currently included with your Prime Video membership. They're slim pickings on Prime Video right now, but I dug deep through their entire catalog and I found 19 really great movies that are either lesser known or underrated. This video is sponsored by Raycon and I'll tell you more about them later in the video. But right now, at my number 19 pick, we're going to talk about a frat movie, Brotherhood. Now don't get me wrong, this is not a party movie, rather it's about something that went horribly wrong at a party, and a bunch of what are essentially children, I mean fraternity brothers, people in college, are trying to figure out how to solve this problem, and it is not going well. Now this is a very simple story, I've explained it already that quickly, that is the setup, but there's quite a bit of tension considering how simple this setup actually is. It only takes place in a few locations, fairly simple characters, but it is pretty well acted for such a simple movie. Now, it's often the case with movies that are far back on my list that they're not for everyone, and this is a good example of one where if you're not interested in the story, there's not necessarily a lot more going on here to sink your teeth into. Now one that does have a little bit more to sink your teeth into is Sushi Girl. Now another one that is very, very simple, I'll be able to explain it in less than 30 seconds. A bunch of bad guys assemble to have a dinner meeting where they're discussing a bunch of bad stuff and in that meeting there is a nude woman laid out on a table covered in sushi. This apparently is something people do sometimes, but what you get with this movie are some really great character actors playing some really great bad guys, including Mark Hamill. I know he doesn't look like Luke Skywalker in this movie, but some of you probably know that he voiced the Joker on the animated series, and I believe some other things for quite a few years. Second to Luke Skywalker, it's one of his most famous roles, He's not doing the Joker in this movie, but he's doing a really crazy maniacal character that's kind of in the same wheelhouse. So if you're a fan of his Joker voice, I think you'll really dig what he does in this movie. And again, it's a simple movie, but it can be brutal. And if you like Tarantino-esque movies about bad guys, and this is a pretty good one, even if it is super simple. Now my number 17 pick on this list is actually what I would call a B movie. There are some good actors in this, but it's kind of your balls to the wall road movie. It's gonna be full of plot holes and things like that, but it is kind of a cool flick. It's called Transit. Jim Caviezel stars in this as a man taking his family on a camping trip when a group of pretty ruthless bank robbers hide their loot in his family car, and then a chase ensues, and things get pretty intense with this movie. But keep in mind, it's like a B-level road movie. If you go into it with the right expectations, meaning you're expecting some weak performances, some weak production value, but just some wild, cool action, then Transit is a pretty fun flick. Another action movie that I would also put in a similar lower budget category, but that has a very different tone, is Accident Man. The name's Fallon, and I'm an assassin. Yeah, yeah, I know. You've already seen all the assassin movies and all their sequels, right? You seem pretty unscathed. Well, I don't bruise easy. Longtime subscribers know that I'm a big Scott Atkins fan. He does a ton of really fun lower budget action movies, and Accident Man is one of the most fun ones I think he's ever done. In this movie he plays a hitman that makes things look like accidents, very much like the mechanic, except this movie has kind of a fun tone to it. Now the story and everything that's happening is a little more serious, I mean it is a really kind of gritty action movie at times, but it does have a tone that's lighter than you normally get with movies like this, which edges it kind of into the action comedy realm a little bit, but not too much. Yet it manages to work the way a lot of these Scott Atkins movies do. If you've liked some of the other ones I've recommended on this channel over the years, movies like Avengement, then I also strongly recommend checking out Accident Man. Now, a movie with some big stars that had a big theatrical release that I still think is pretty underrated is The Guardian, starring Kevin Costner and Ashton Kutcher. This movie depicts the U.S. Coast Guard's A School, where elite swimmers learn how to become some of the most elite rescue divers in the world. 
And The Guardian features some really great rescue sequences that are really well done, but it also is a very good story about this A school, the training process, everything like that. So even the parts that aren't completely filled with action are still really well done. Now, I will say this is one of the more accessible movies on this list, and longtime subscribers know I'm a big fan of weird movies. Don't worry, I got one coming up for you on this list, but this is one that I know large swaths of people enjoyed, and for one that is such a crowd pleaser, it's also got unusually high ratings, and it's just an all-around, pretty well-rounded movie. Now, speaking of things that are underrated, I wanna tell you about today's sponsor, Raycon. Here are my Raycon earbuds. I absolutely love these things. I've been using them a ton over the last couple of months. In fact, just popping these things in makes housework go by like a breeze. My house has never been cleaner since I've had these Raycons, and it's the reason I'm getting them for Mrs. Van Dam for Mother's Day. Mine are the everyday earbuds, and they come in a variety of colors. I think I'm gonna get her the rose gold ones. She has also started exercising more recently. What's great about the Raycon earbuds is they've got these soft gel tips that are actually adjustable. You've got different ones so they'll fit your ear size. Whether you're jogging on a treadmill, lifting weights, doing dishes, cleaning the house, I mean, they, you know, they stay in there. And this is not just the case, this actually charges them. The earbuds themselves have an eight hour life and then it's up to 32 hours with this case and they charge pretty quickly. But what I really love about the Raycons is they're half the price of other competitive brands and they sound just as amazing. And right now when my viewers click the link in the description or just go to buyraycon.com slash flick connection, you're gonna save 15% off your order which makes them even a better gift. Raycons have over 49,000 five-star reviews, the perfect gift for a five-star mom if you ask me. Again, just go to the link in the description or go to buyraycon, that's R-A-Y-C-O-N dot com slash flick connection and again, say 15% off your order. It's a great deal, but let's go ahead and move on with the rest of the movies on this list. Now, I promised some weird movies on this list, and while there are not many, my next pick is one of the weirdest movies you will have seen in a while if, if, and it's a big if, you decide to watch Cosmopolis. Now, this is actually one of David Cronenberg's lesser known movies. He's a very famous director with a big movie about to come out that a lot of people are excited about, but Robert Pattinson starred in a lower budget movie that he did about 10 years ago. This is based on a novel and it is extremely weird. If you know anything about David Cronenberg movies, movies like Naked Lunch, Videodrome, and Dead Ringers, then you know he's into really weird stuff of almost every sort, and Cosmopolis features a lot of those, the biggest one being sex. It is a very sexually charged movie, and it clearly does not take place in our reality, but it's very difficult to put your finger on what exactly is going on. And while that's not necessarily the point of Cosmopolis, it is sort of the vehicle of sorts. And this is a very talky movie, but it features some amazing actors doing single scenes with Pattinson. So from a performance standpoint, there's actually a lot to love about this movie. And from a weird standpoint, there's a lot to love about this movie. And when I say weird, I mean it in all caps. Do not check this movie out just because you're a fan of Robert Pattinson. In fact, if you have not been a fan of his so far and you like really, and I mean really weird stuff, this movie may turn you around. All right, so that's the weirdest one on this list, and my next one is not only a crowd pleaser, but it stars who I think is really everyone's favorite person at the moment, Johnny Depp. He appropriately plays a man named Nick in one of his lesser known movies, Nick of Time. This is kind of a classic race against the clock thriller. It's set against the backdrop of an election. Christopher Walken plays a really great bad guy in this movie, and the movie overall is kind of by the book, but it's got some great scenes of tension that's just elevated by having a great cast and pretty good production value, but this is one of Johnny Depp's lesser known movies. You can kind of tell when you watch it. This is also him when he was a lot younger, but obviously he's killing it, and the movie overall is really thrilling. It just feels a little bit dated today. Another one that feels dated, but kind of in a cool way, is Two Days in the Valley. Now this is a crime movie, but it's one of those movies where you've got different storylines that all end up converging. Not my favorite mode of storytelling, but 
Two Days in the Valley actually does a really good job with that formula and it's packed with some really great actors doing fantastic performances. Jeff Daniels plays this angst ridden vice cop whose air conditioner is broken on the hottest day of the year and he's going to lose his mind if he doesn't shut down the massage parlor in the valley. You've also got Charlize Theron not only doing a great role but one of her hottest characters ever in a sex scene and what I think you're still allowed to call a cat fight between her and Terry Hatcher. Eric Stoltz is in it and James Spader I think gives one of his best performances. He's really slick in this movie. I know some people like him in Blacklist and things but he's doing top-notch stuff here. It was released in 96 and overall just has a really kind of cool 90s vibe that you just can't get from movies that were made after the year 2000. There's something about it and Two Days in the Valley really is a great example of one. All right, I think the only Amazon original movie to make this list because I generally don't like their original films is The Lost City of Z. Robert Pattinson makes the list again, but he's playing second fiddle here to Charlie Hunnam. This is the true story, though, of some explorers that essentially discovered the Amazon. Now, obviously, the Amazon always existed, but they discovered that there was this expansive civilization essentially buried by the jungle. Now, that alone is not the reason to watch it. Otherwise, I would not have just spoiled that for you. But what you get is a fairly long, fairly realistic and grounded movie about exploration. And the type of exploration that doesn't really exist much in the world anymore. We've explored a lot of places, unlocked a lot of these types of mysteries. And while I'm sure there are more, you can probably agree that this particular age of exploration is certainly dead. But it is interesting to go on this journey with these guys. And the movie is incredibly well shot, feels very realistic. You're never noticing production restraints or anything. Obviously, it's well acted. And it's ultimately just a really good delivery device for this particular story, which I think is kind of an important one. Now, I say that to say this, my next movie, not only is it not an important story, even though it's kind of a true story, and it's certainly not an important movie, it's one of the more fun movies Michael Bay has ever directed in his career. I watched a lot of movies, Paul. I know what I'm doing. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not about to say that Pain and Gain is his best movie. There are certainly better movies in his filmography, but for one of his lesser known ones, this one is a lot of fun to watch mainly because it features my favorite version of Mark Wahlberg, the crazy, unhinged, dumb as a brick Mark Wahlberg. I love when he does those characters. That aspect was one of my favorite aspects of his role in Boogie Nights, and it's on full display in this movie. You also get The Rock playing a lunkhead in a pretty edgy rated R movie about a couple of meatheads that decide to kidnap somebody and try to bleed them dry. It's wild stuff, again, loosely based on a true story, but it's fun to watch a director like Michael Bay who can never stop moving the camera, who loves bright colors and flashy stuff, doing something that isn't Transformers or Bad Boys or full of car chases. He's doing something that's a little more grounded, yet it still has that Michael Bay electricity, and it's pretty wild. I actually really enjoy this movie. I think if you have not really liked Michael Bay movies over the years, this one, while it's not a great film, if you go into it expecting kind of a silly movie, it might be one of his more enjoyable ones you've ever seen. Albino Alligator squeaks into the top 10 despite being one of the smallest movies on this list. After a heist gone wrong, three robbers take shelter in a bar and cannot manage to get out after it gets surrounded by police. So the vast majority of this story unfolds inside this bar room, but it's head off by some fantastic actors. The lead role goes to Matt Dillon. He does a fantastic job, but you've also got Gary Sinise, Faye Dunaway, Viggo Mortensen, and William Fitchner has been in a ton of stuff over the years. And while he's not the lead role, he does a killer job in this movie. I think he gives one of the best performances of his career in this movie. This is one that if you generally like the way I've described it so far, you like smaller crime flicks, Albino Alligator is a fantastic one to put on. Just expect it to be a talky movie because after all, it is about a bunch of people trapped in a bar for 90 minutes. Now my next pick also takes place in Louisiana and also features an all-star cast and a fantastic director with Sam Raimi doing one of his first dramas, but it's got a lot more going on in it than just drama in The Gift. This stars Kate Blanchett, Katie Holmes, and Keanu Reeves, and one of his more interesting characters I think he's ever done, at least it's certainly against type, 
But this was also written by Billy Bob Thornton, and it is a great drama that takes place in Louisiana, but at the same time, there is a supernatural element because Kate Blanchett plays a fortune teller. So while I wouldn't classify this as a horror movie or fantasy or anything, it's also got a lot more going on than your typical drama. But it's very well written by Billy Bob Thornton and very well told by Sam Raimi and well acted by everybody else that I just mentioned. This is a really cool flick that for whatever reason just did not ever get the audience I think it deserved. If you've never seen it and I've interested you in the least, this is certainly going to be one of the better things on Prime Video for you right now. The next pick on this list stars Tommy Lee Jones and Jeff Bridges and is one of the most underrated movies those two guys ever did. Not together, separately. It's their most underrated movie, Blown Away. In this movie, Jeff Bridges plays a member of the Boston Bomb Squad, targeted by an IRA bomber played by Tommy Lee Jones. And what I find interesting about this is that it takes place in our world, it's very realistic, however, it's kind of the closest thing you could get to like a Batman villain and a real life superhero with Jeff Bridges' character. It's not quite that, but it's close. It edges up right next to that type of territory and is great stuff. It's got a fantastic soundtrack, mostly by U2. It works for this story. And really, I mean, I know Tommy Lee Jones has played a villain a few times in his career. This is easily one of his best. And the movie itself, it came out in 94 and it has some shots and things that are a little cutting edge that make it feel a bit fresher than 1994. So this one does not feel nearly as dated as some of the other 90s movies that have been featured on this list, which is one of the reasons why I've got it ranked so high. All right, my next pick has been featured on the channel quite a bit over the last couple years because it was one of my favorite hidden gems to recommend when it was on Netflix. Now it's included with Prime Video. I'm talking about Freaks. In this movie, a young girl is trapped in a house with who is supposedly her father, played by Emil Hirsch. That is not a spoiler, by the way. That is the way this movie starts off. It's very difficult to tell what is going on. Why is this girl not allowed to leave this house? It starts to sound like something nefarious is going on, but Freaks turns into this incredible sci-fi fantasy movie with some amazing world building, even though there are not many sets that take place outside of this house. There are a few. That speaks to how strong the world building actually is. I got a very good sense of what was going on outside the scope of this movie in this interesting fantasy sci-fi world that you get thrust into, and I would eagerly await a sequel to this movie. It was set up that well. Even if we don't get one, you've got a great role from Emile Hirsch. Bruce Dern plays a really great character, and the little girl carrying this thing. She's on screen in almost every shot. She does a fantastic job as well. So if you're interested in that, this is one of the better low-budget sci-fi movies I've seen in years. Now, I said one of the better, and one that is a little better that I've seen in recent years is Love and Monsters. Now this is one of the big budget releases that came out during the pandemic and it was certainly one of the better ones to me. I was really surprised by how good this movie actually was because it presents itself as sort of a teen action adventure movie and it is that, but it's a lot more. This takes place in a future where giant insects have overtaken the world and the last few living survivors on Earth are huddled up underground just trying to make it. Dylan O'Brien stars in this, and even though I've liked him in things over the years, this movie sold me on him as a leading man. He did a fantastic job carrying this movie. There was great scenes of action, but he's also funny when he needs to be. He's just a good, solid, well-rounded leading man. And the movie itself has some really fun surprises, despite the fact that it feels like something that I've seen before. It feels like something that has put me to sleep before. However, this one is just really well made from beginning to end, where a lot of movies like this, these sort of teen sci-fi movies fall short. Love and Monsters does something different. It does fantastic storytelling, it's really well directed, and everything gets conveyed perfectly well. This is not The Godfather or anything like that, but for teen adventure movies, I don't know, it might be The Godfather of those. Okay, now we're gonna talk about one that is not only underrated, I think it's a little misunderstood because it has some mixed reviews. However, its stars was written by and directed by one of my favorite creators working today, Jim Cummings. Let me just make this perfectly clear. There is no such thing as werewolves. Our killer is a guy and I'm gonna find him and I'm gonna kill... 
and we're gonna bring him to justice. I talked about his newest film, The Beta Test, recently. You can catch that on Hulu. But The Wolf of Snow Hollow recently got added to Prime, and I highly recommend this movie, but you gotta listen to my breakdown of it. Yes, this is a werewolf movie. Yes, it's violent and gory at times. So all of that is true, but the reason to watch this movie is Jim Cummings' performance. And no, not because this is an amazing, dramatic piece or anything like that. No, it's because he's this small town deputy sheriff who is going to lose his mind if he does not solve these murder cases that everyone else seems to think is a werewolf. He's a jerk, he's neurotic, he's literally losing his mind in several scenes that are all done in one take, and it's absolutely hilarious. If you tap into his dialogue early on, there's a lot of subtlety to it that is really funny, but I can see why if you're just wanting to veg out and watch a werewolf movie, this one is going to disappoint. If you tap into Jim Cummings' performance and the way that it was written, then this is a total gem of a movie that is really funny and also has some fantastic werewolf stuff in it. Okay, I said these were underrated gems. I didn't say they were hidden gems. My next pick is one of my favorite movies from 2021. They just recently added it to Prime Video, Guy Ritchie's Wrath of Man. Now, this is not my favorite Guy Ritchie movie, but I did really enjoy it, and I will say it's one of my favorite Jason Statham action movies. Now, you also need to know, if you go into this just expecting your typical Jason Statham action movie, you're going to be disappointed. This one is something different. It's got some cheesiness, some silliness, and it does have quite a bit of action at times. All that stuff's great. But in addition to that stuff, you also get a gritty, dark, Guy Ritchie gangster movie. I was not expecting that. I was expecting a little bit more of a typical Jason Statham thing, and it is not. It is a dark, edgy movie with some real grim sequences in it, but again, at the same time, it's this kind of wild, crazy heist thing, and I think this movie's got a really nice balance. This one does feel dated. It's somewhat intentional. This reminded me a lot of old Charles Bronson movies, Clint Eastwood movies. Appropriately enough, his son, Scott Eastwood, is in this. It's one of my favorite characters I've ever seen him do. So there's a lot to love about this movie, I think especially if you go into it with the right mindset, but certainly one of the cooler things released in theaters last year. All right, speaking of old crime movies from the 70s and 80s, one of my favorite of all time is Thief, starring James Caan. Now, the reason this is one of my favorites in that genre is because it's directed by Michael Mann. Not only that, this is actually his first feature film, and he absolutely killed it. If that name doesn't sound familiar, he would go on to do some of the greatest crime movies ever made, movies like Heat, and you can see his style early, early on. Now, he did have experience. He had already been directing Miami Vice for quite a while when this came out, and this has a similar feel to that show, but it feels like real criminal workings. It doesn't quite feel like movie criminals. Even though you recognize James Caan, it feels like you're going along with a real career criminal who does this for a living, who knows all the ins and outs, who knows about things you've never seen portrayed in movies before. And that is what is so special about Michael Mann's work in the crime genre, is it always feels real. Similarly to how Tom Clancy's work can be very, very realistic, Michael Mann does the same thing with his crime movies. I love it. Thief is a great example. If you consider yourself a movie buff, hell, even if you don't, you've just liked some of his other movies over the years, movies like Heat, if you really revere those, you have to watch Thief. You have to. All right, and then my number one pick is one of the most underrated movies from one of the greatest actors of all time, Anthony Hopkins, in The World's Fastest Indian. Good morning. Good morning. You know how fast you were going back there? Yeah, about uh, 150, 160 miles an hour. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that sounds about right. This is the true story of New Zealander Burt Monroe, a man who tuned up his Indian motorcycle to be one of the fastest land vehicles in the world back during this time. And he goes on this journey to America, to the Salt Flats, to race it and try and break a record. That's it. 
But what you get is this amazing road movie where he's meeting different people along the way. And what makes this movie work, aside from it just being really well shot, really well directed, and about an interesting person. Aside from all of that, Anthony Hopkins' performance is just incredible. You buy that he's this New Zealand nut job. Even though you recognize him as Anthony Hopkins, you buy that he's this kind of wacko person that people aren't sure about at first, but ultimately end up loving, and the movie portrays that really well. He's an amazing character to go on this journey with. As you can tell, I'm gushing about it with some enthusiasm, but I also put it at number one above a bunch of really cool movies. That's because this one is so good. If you made it this far in the video, I highly recommend watching it, but I also recommend you let me know about any other recommendations you've seen lately. Who knows, one of your recommendations might make it onto a future video. If you want even more recommendations on a weekly basis, go to my website, darrenvandam.com. There's some recommendations right there on the homepage that I update weekly, and you can access all of my back catalog episodes. So you'll literally never run out of good movies to watch, but I will keep making these videos as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this Prime video list, and you will see me on the next one.